Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's Christmas Eve, so let me be the first to say Merry Christmas. Now, I have a treat for you today. We're going to learn how easy it is to solve half-life problems. So let's begin. So first, let's do some background knowledge. Let's look at radioactive decay. So radioactive decay is the process of spontaneously releasing energy from the nucleus of an atom to become stable. So if you notice, here's our radioactive element. And then it releases that neutron or releases a particle from the atom in order to be stable. But in, in addition, it also releases energy. So that's what radioactive decay is. It's releasing a particle and releasing energy from the nucleus in order to become stable. Now let's take a look at half-life decay. So half-life decay is just like what it sounds. That means half of a substance will decay in a set time frame. And half-life is different for each radioactive element. So some elements have half-lives of a couple of days, a couple of minutes, a couple of hours, or even years. So, for example, let's look at carbon-14. If you notice, carbon-14 has a half-life of 5,730 years. So that means for every 5,730 years, half of its life decays. So say we had a 10-gram sample. After 5,730 years, that 10 gram sample would decay to half, which would be 5 grams. After another 5,730 years, it would be 2.5 grams. And then after another 5,730 years, it would go down to 1.25 grams. So let's take a look at some half life. Let's look at our steps for solving half life problems. So, first, we're going to write HL, SA, EA, and ET beside each half life problem where HL stands for half-life, SA stands for starting amount, EA stands for ending amount, and ET stands for ending time. Second, we're going to read and identify the components we need to solve the problem. Third, we're going to put a question mark by what we're solving for. Fourth, we're going to make a T-chart for our half-life time and half-life amount. Our half-life time will always be on the left-hand side and it's going to always start with zero, and our half-life amount is going to be on the right-hand side. And fifth, we're going to put the components that we're given in the chart and solve for what we don't have. So let's take a look at our first half-life problem. So magnesium-25 has a half-life of 15 hours. How much magnesium-25 will remain in a 20-gram sample after 60 hours? So let's first, let's go ahead and put our HL, our SA, EA, and ET. This is going to help us identify the components that they give us in the problem. And it says here that magnesium 25 has a half-life of 15 hours. So it lets us know it's 15 hours. And then it says how much magnesium 25 will remain in a 20 gram sample after 60 hours. 20 gram sample, that is going to be our starting amount. So we can put that for our essay. And then it says after 60 hours, hours is talking about time. So that lets us know that's going to be our ending time. So what they don't give us is our ending amount, and that's what we'll be solving for. So now we're going to go ahead and make our T-chart. Where we have time on our left-hand side, and we have amount on our right-hand side. And as a note, I'm going to... Put over here on the time side, you add your half lives. And then on the amount side, we divide by two. Go ahead and make our lines. Now, on our time side, we said before, it always starts with zero. And our starting amount is 20 grams. It told us our half life was 15 hours. And our ending time was 60 hours. But if I look at my note up here, we add our half life. So 15 plus 15 gives us 30. Plus 15 gives us 45. And then plus another 15 gives us 60 hours. So we stop right there because that is our ending time. And then our right hand side, all we have to do now is just divide by 2. So 20 divided by 2 is 10. 10 divided by 2 is 5. 5 divided by 2 is 2.5. And 2.5 divided by 2 is going to give us 1.25 grams. So how much will remain in a 20-gram sample after 60 hours? 
1.25 grams of magnesium 25 will remain is after 60 hours. So our answer is 1.25 grams. So let's take a look at our second half-life problem. An 80 gram sample of a radioactive isotope decays to 5 grams in 32 days. What is the half-life of this element? So let's go ahead and put our HL, SA, EA, and ET. If you notice in this problem, they ask, what is the half-life of this element? So we don't know what the half-life is, so that's what we're solving for. So we put a question mark there. And then it says an 80 gram sample of a radioactive isotope decays to 5 grams. So that means it starts with 80 grams and decays all the way down to 5 grams. So our starting amount is 80 grams. Our ending amount is 5 grams. And it says it does it in 32 days. That's going to be our ending time. So now let's set up our T-chart. Now I put a T for time on the left side and I put an A for amount on the right side. Now as a rule of thumb, I always tell my students to solve for the side that they give you both components on. So for example, on the half-life or time side, they don't give us half-life, they only give us ending time. But on our amount side, they give us a starting amount and ending amount. So we can go ahead and start there. So we have 80 grams here, which is our starting amount. Remember we said our time always starts with zero. So now we're going to divide 80 grams by 2 until we get down to our ending amount, which is to 5. So let's begin. 80 divided by 2 is 40. 40 divided by 2 is 20. 20 divided by 2 is 10. And then 10 divided by 2 is 5. So we can stop there. And our ending time is 32 days, so now we can put it right across from our ending amount. So the question is, how do we find our half-life? Well, this is what I have my students do. We take the number of half-lives that we went through and divide it into 32. So for example, we went through one, two, three, four half-lives. So I'm going to take 32 and divide it by 4, and that's going to give us 8. Now, if that is correct, we should be able to keep adding 8 until we get to 32. So let's see if we're right. 8 plus 8 is 16, and then 16 plus 8 is 24, and then 24 plus 8 gives us 32. So our half-life is every 8 days. Every 8 days. So now it's time for you to do some independent practice on your own. You have two minutes to solve the following half-life problem beginning now. So now let's take a look at our results for practice problem number three. It said Xenon-135 had a half-life of 12 days. It said the starting amount was 6 grams. Its ending time was 24 days, but we didn't know what our ending amount was. So we put our zero on our time side. We put our starting amount at 6 grams, and our half-life was 12 days, so 12 plus 12 gave us 24. And then we divided by 2 until we got down to 1.5. So 6 divided by 2 is 3. 3 divided by 2 gave us 1.5 grams, and so our ending amount ends up being 1.5 grams. If that's what you got, then you did a wonderful, fantastic job. Great job. So now let's take a look at our fourth practice problem. If you notice, it says phosphorus 32 has a half-life of 14 days. How long will it take for the phosphorus 32 sample to decay to one-fourth of its original mass? No, no, don't let this trick you up. One-fourth is actually talking about a fraction. So you're going to start your starting amount with one whole and then continue the rest of the problem like you've worked the other problems. You have two minutes to work this problem starting now. So now let's see how you did on practice problem four. So if you notice in our problem, it said that our half-life was 14 days. Move that out of the way. And then our starting amount, we said we was going to start with 1. And then it says it decays to one-fourth of its original mass. So our ending amount is one-fourth. What we didn't know was our ending time. So let's look. On our time side, you should have started with 0. On your amount side, you should have started with 1. Then your half-life was 14 days. Now, your amount side, you're going to divide by 1 until we get to 1 fourth. So, 1 divided by 
2, when you should be dividing by 2, 1 divided by 2 gives you 1 half. 1 half divided by 2 gives you 1 fourth. And then on our time side, 14 plus 14 gives us 28 days. So if you got 28 days for your ending time, you did a wonderful, great job. Awesome. You have two minutes to solve this problem, and I'll pause the video beginning now. So by now, you should be in a pretty good groove for solving half-life problems. So let's go ahead and check over our work. Our half-life, we put a question mark beside it because that's what we were solving for. Our starting amount was 1.2 grams. Our ending amount was 0.15 grams. And then our ending time was 5.49 seconds. On our T-chart, on our time side, we started with zero. On our amount side, we started with 1.2 grams. And we divided by two until we got down to 0.15 grams for our ending amount. We looked at the number of half-lives we went through. So we went through one, two, three half-lives. And then we took this three and divided it into 5.49 seconds, which gave us 1.83 seconds. If this is correct, we should be able to keep adding 1.83 until we get to 5.49 seconds. So let's see. 1.83 plus 1.83 is going to give us 3.66 seconds. And 3.66 plus 1.83 is going to give us 5.49 seconds. So if you look, our half-life is 1.83 seconds. So that's our answer. Every Our half-life is every 1.83 seconds. If you did that, you did a great, fantastic job. So now you're going to analyze the half-life diagram below and answer the following questions. You have two minutes to get this done beginning now. Let's take a look at your results. So number one says, what is the half-life of carbon-14? Well, if you notice, 100 divided by 2 gives us 50. And then if I bring this 50 over and I come straight down, that'll let me know that carbon-14 has a half-life of every 5,730 years. Our next question, number two, says, if only 25% of carbon-14 remains in this sample, how many years have passed? So here's 25%. I bring it over and I bring it down. That lets me know that 11,000 460 years have passed. And then if we look at number three, if 400 grams of carbon-14 were in an organism when it originally died, how much carbon-14 was left after three half-lives? Well, in order to solve this one, I would start with 400 right here. So 400 grams was our starting amount. Then I just keep dividing by two. We go down 200 grams, that's one half-life. We go to 100 grams, that is two half-lives. And then we go down to 50 grams, that is three half-lives. So how much carbon-14 was left after three half-lives? 50 grams. If you got all three of these answers, you did a wonderful, fantastic job. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope this tutorial was on Half-Life was helpful and beneficial to you. I'm Chivy Spivey Sivey and off with my son, Jordan Spivey. Peace and have an awesome, wonderful day.